In the previous video, we had reduced this combination, parallel and series circuit, to um, an equivalent circuit that is this. And we went through the procedure for combining those resistors. Now to fully describe this circuit we need to go ahead and begin some calculations. So let's start by finding I total. Alright, oops, that's supposed to be a question mark, not that number two. Alright, remember we have Ohm's law, V equals IR. To get I by itself we need to divide both sides by R and then they cancel on this side and so we have I equals V over R so that's going to be 25 volts divided by 1200 ohms All right. All right. 16.7 milliamps or um, the total I is going to be equal to 0 .0 one six seven amps All right so we're off to a good start but now as I begin to want to know more and more about the uh, potential drops and current in my circuit I've got to basically work backwards okay so I've got to go back to the step before this alright and the circuit you can look back to the other video um, we had before we simplified to this was this right and so this was 25 volts and this was 330 270 and this was um, 600 ohms. All right. Now the voltage drop, okay, we're going to have a voltage drop across each one of these um, components. It, this is again an equivalent circuit, all right. And so let's look at um, what each one of those is. In our original circuit, this was one, this was five. And then this is the equivalent of 2, 3, and 4. All right, so um, V1, the loss there, is going to be equal to, because all the current goes through that component, is going to be equal to IT times R1. And that's going to be equal to, um, we had our current before, and now I'm just going to multiply it by 330. Oops, I uh, multiplied by 300. All right, and I get 5.5 um, volts. All right, and then I want to do the same thing for V5. Okay, and V5 is going to be IT times R5 which is going to work out to be um, 0.0167 amps times 270 ohms. And so we're going to get 4.5 volts. All right, and now um, to get V, the voltage drop against 2, 3, and 4, that's going to be IT times R, 2, 3, 4, that equivalent resistance. All right, so that's going to be our total times our 600 ohms. All right, and I get 10 volts. So V1 is 5.5, V5 is 4.5, and V234 
is 10 volts. If I've done everything correctly earlier, there's something wrong because um, our source was 25 volts. So let's go back and just quickly check and be sure that I did that correctly. I didn't. I must have done that wrong. 25 divided by... Oops, sorry, 25 divided by... Yeah, I had this, I must have not punched in 25 volts earlier. I must have done 20 volts because I got the wrong total current. All right, so see, by checking my numbers, I had realized something was wrong there because I got 20 volts. All right, so this number should have been 0 0.0208. All right, 20.8 amps. Okay, so that's going to change all these answers. Okay, and let's recalculate. All right. Six point eight seven five volts for the first voltage drop. Um, So times 270 for that fifth one. Now we get 5.625 volts. And then for the 600 ohms, oops, I'm going to do 12.5 right, volts. And just looking, that's going to add up to pretty close to 25. So we're a lot better off. Now look, this 12.5 voltage drop occurs across this piece of the circuit, which means that happens across that piece of the circuit, and that 600 ohms represents the equivalent resistance we had before. So we need to go back now to what was the step before this. It was a circuit that looked like this. And I'm actually going to go back to basically the very first circuit because we can now completely solve it. Okay, and this is what we have. So 330... 25, 270, this is 1.8 kilo ohms, this was 600 and 300, okay? So now we know that the potential cross here, drop across this, was 12.5 volts, which means the potential drop across here and across here is... what? 12.5 volts, right? So since we know the voltage drop and we know the resistance in each branch, we can determine the current in each branch. Okay, so if I want to know, this was originally, I think, uh, resistor 4, this was resistor 2, and this was resistor 3. If I want to know the current in that branch, okay, I know that V4 was equal to 12.5 volts, right? And I know R4. So I can find I4. And Ohm's Law tells us that I is equal to V over R. And so that's going to be 12.5 volts divided by the resistance, 1,800 ohms. All right, so 12.5 divided by 1,800, and I get mm, 0 0.0069. 0 0.0069 amps, all right? So the voltage drop across this one is also 12.5. So V23 is equal to 12.5. That resistance, 2,3, the equivalent was 900 
ohms, right? So I two three is um, V over R, 12.5 volts divided by 900 ohms, and Point oh one three nine amps. Okay, a couple of things to look at here. One, we expect that that current would be greater because there's less resistance in that branch. Okay. Two, um, sorry, I realize you can't see that current. Um, we expect that current to be greater because there's less resistance here. Two, this current plus this current better add up to be about the total current. So if we add those up, we get yep, um, 0 0.0208 amps. So that's correct. Okay, and pretty much the only thing we haven't done now is characterize the voltage drop across those two components. So V2 is gonna be equal to IR so 0 0.0139 amps times 600. All right, and 0 0.0139 times 600. I get 8.34 volts. And then V3 should be point, uh, same current, right? Those two components are in series, 300 ohms. So, I get 4.17 volts. All right, and I hope this one plus this one better add to be about 12.5 volts, and it does. So, all right, hope that helps. Have a great day.